Great. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for that introduction. This is joint work with Selene Delacourt and David Holtz, who are also at Berkeley Haas, and Rowan Clark and Rem Koning at HBS. <laughs> Over the last 12 months, we've seen this surge of research looking at the impact of generative AI. The focus of this research has been on the impact of AI in rich, Western, industrialized contexts. And this leaves open the risk that generative AI could negatively impact those people, places, and firms that are most in need of support. At the same time, there's a large body of evidence which shows that firm performance can be constrained by access to high quality information and advice. And this is exactly the kind of content that generative AI systems could be uniquely positioned to provide at scale. Today I'm going to be showing you evidence from a five month long field experiment looking at the impacts of a GPT-4 powered business mentorship chatbot that we designed to provide strategic advice to Kenyan micro entrepreneurs. The way this AI mentor works is entrepreneurs can text in with a question and then a couple of seconds later, if they're on the approved list of users, they're going to receive uh, three to five pieces of, of tailored advice. And I'm going to start by walking you through a couple of examples of real conversations, real interactions that participants in our sample had with this AI mentor. So the first participant texted in and she said she's been running this fast food business at a Matatu terminus, essentially a Kenyan bus station. And she's really worried because lately there's been an uptick in competition and she wants to know how she can stay ahead of the pack. And a couple of seconds later, she receives the response on the right from the AI mentor, which starts with a suggestion to differentiate her offerings, right? If everybody else at this bus station is selling fried fish, you should sell something else. Otherwise, you're going to end up cost competing with all of these other businesses and you're going to have very low margins. Then the AI mentor goes on to suggest strategies that she can use to improve customer retention through, for example, a loyalty program or ways that she can expand her customer base by partnering with local events and organizations. Another example comes from an entrepreneur who texted in and said, this guy's been running a car and motorcycle washing business. And he's been running this business all by himself and he's sick of it. He would really like to hire an employee but he's concerned that if he hires someone, he's going to end up with a shirking employee and is going to push his business into the red. And again, on the right, you can see the response from the AI mentor. Here, it begins with a suggestion of how he can write a very clear job description. You want to outline all of the tasks and responsibilities of a prospective employee. And then it goes on to show uh, strategies that he can use to monitor employee performance, to incentivize employee effort and to provide feedback effectively to employees. In both of these examples, and more broadly with the AI mentor, it's not providing a particular suggestion, oh, you should do action A, you should do action B. Instead, it's providing a menu of options, and the entrepreneur still has to exercise their judgment and decide which, if any, of these options are actually worth pursuing. We evaluated the impacts of this AI mentor in a five month long field experiment, which started with the observation that there's very high Facebook use in Kenya. Some of the highest Facebook use in the world. Lots of businesses are operating over Facebook. And so we ran ads on the meta ad platform to recruit a, a panel of 600 Kenyan small micro enterprises. We then followed these micro enterprises for three months, building out this really rich panel of performance data. And after building out this panel and really understanding a lot about the background of these firms, how long they've been around, how, what their revenue and, and profit trends look like, we randomized these entrepreneurs either to a control condition where they have access to basically a PDF business training booklet. It's freely available online. We send them this, this booklet over WhatsApp. Or in the treatment group, we give them unrestricted access to our GPT-4 powered AI mentor and they can text in over WhatsApp whenever they want and, and use this to get advice. So here I'm going to show you the impact of our AI mentor on business performance. This is going to be a standardized index of business performance. It's going to uh, look at a combined measure of weekly and monthly profits and revenue. And we're looking at 
these four time points after the treatments and the, the control intervention were randomly assigned. We're looking at this panel of performance following randomization, and we're pooling across all 2,400 of our post-treatment observations. Now, this performance index, the way to interpret it is on the y-axis, this will be the causal effect of generative AI tools on business performance, on profits and revenue. And values above zero mean that the AI tools are having a positive impact on business performance, are leading to an increase in, uh, in profits and revenue. And before I show you the results, I want to remind you that basically every paper that I've seen has found a positive effect of generative AI on productivity and performance. But we don't. We find essentially a null effect on performance. Here it's slightly positive. In other statistical models, it's slightly negative. It's basically a null result. Underlying this result is a really interesting and I think important heterogeneous effect. So next I'm going to show you the results where we're going to take our sample of entrepreneurs and we're going to split them up into those entrepreneurs that prior to treatment were in the bottom half of the distribution. And we're calling these initially low-performing entrepreneurs. When we look at the causal effect among these initially low-performing entrepreneurs, we see actually a performance decline of 0.09 standard deviations. This is about a 7.5% decrease in profits and revenue. AI is actually making these entrepreneurs worse off. And you can guess what's coming next. Among those entrepreneurs that were performing well to begin with, that were in the top half of the distribution, there's a performance increase here of 0.19 standard deviations. This is about a 15% increase in profits and revenue. Now, if you've run a field experiment before, if you're familiar with research, as many people here are, you're probably thinking about issues related to compliance. Maybe it's the case that actually the, low, the initially low-performing entrepreneurs are getting some small benefit from this business training guide that we provided to them. And maybe they're just not using the AI tools, right? Maybe it's only the high performers that are using the AI tools. But this isn't what we find. We actually find extremely similar use patterns among the low-performing and the high-performing entrepreneurs. Very similar use patterns. This is the distribution of the number of messages or conversational turns that participants had with the AI mentor. The distribution between those low performers and the high performers are very similar. The average number of messages sent also very similar between those low performing and the high performing entrepreneurs. So what's going on, right? Why do we have this result where the low performers are actually experiencing a performance decline? I want to end with some insights from this incredibly rich conversational data we have. We have information on every single text sent to and received from this AI mentor. And what we see is that entrepreneurs who are among that low, initially low performing group are much more likely to be asking questions about how they can avoid competition, how they can essentially keep their business from just going under, how they can, can, can stay afloat, right? And this is a great example from one of these entrepreneurs who said, my business is close to closing, my challenge is low profitability and really slow sales. And we see this pattern over and over where these initially low performing entrepreneurs are much more likely to be asking questions about these fundamentally more difficult and challenging tasks. What this means is that I think generative AI is poised to have a really important impact on business performance. But whether this impact is positive or negative is going to depend on the tasks that individuals and firms select for generative AI assistance. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to present to you all today.